So a quadrilateral has four sides. If I were to draw a picture, I would want to try and draw them uneven. All of the sides would be different lengths. I struggle with this image. I can never get Well, it ends up looking like a kite or a trapezoid, but it's not supposed to. See, it looks like a kite. Well, so you're trying to draw a four-sided shape with different lengths. They should all be different sizes. So it should that looks like a kite, and it should. A, I'm gonna do rectangle next. Rectangle we have all seen before. So we have two long sides that are equal, uh, two short sides that are equal, and there's one other special thing about a rectangle. Yep, the right angles. So it has two pairs of equal sides or congruent. I use the word congruent a lot. And 90 degree angles in the corner. What's the difference between a square and a rectangle? Square, all the sides are the same. All the sides are the same. So four equal sides and 90 degree angles. Now I'm going to do parallelogram. The reason I wanted to do rectangle first is because a parallelogram looks like a rectangle. The only thing that's different is it has been shifted. The bottom just shift it to the left or right a little bit and then connect the points. When you see a picture of a parallelogram, they usually label it with two arrows and one arrow. The arrows mean that they're parallel to each other. Parallel, parallel. So there are two pairs of parallel sides. When we get into quarter three and quarter four, we get to um, explore parallelograms and look at their properties, which is kind of fun. By properties, I mean, what do you think this length and this length have in common? They're the same. So like if this was a five, this measurement would be a five. So we'll use algebra in math too to kind of find sides and angles and solve. Now with a rhombus, a rhombus is kind of like a parallelogram. The only difference is when you shift it, you need to make sure all sides, it's kind of like a square that's been shifted. Do you see how there's no longer 90 degrees? So if a square, if you look like you have a square, but the angles aren't 90, it is a rhombus. A trapezoid. There are two types of trapezoids. There's just a normal trapezoid and there's an isosceles. Oh, 
going to add it in so you can kind of see the difference. With the trapezoid, there's only one pair of parallel sides, and then you connect. Have any of you played Mousetrap before? And it has a little cage thingy that falls down. That's how I remember a trapezoid. It looks like a little cage thing. You'd stick on a little stick and it goes down. If it's an isosceles trapezoid, does anybody want to take a guess at what would change from this shape when I redraw? Upside down? It will not be upside down. What's an isosceles triangle? Isosceles means that the two sides would be the same length. You notice how these two don't, this one looks a little longer. If it's isosceles, that means my trap, my trapezoid, these lengths would be the same length. Which I did an awful job drawing. Any questions on shapes? When you go to the set section, our new material, it's not very new. We are going to rotate these points and label the coordinate. So mine says to rotate 180 degrees. around the origin. That means I would use the 180 degrees from our note card. Our note card says that when we have x and y and rotate 180, it becomes a negative x and a negative y. So I'm going to write my formula. Where is my point M at, my original point? Four, four. Wait, four, uh, negative four, four. Good. Negative four, four. So if I'm at negative four, up four, when I adjust this point to follow my new point to rotate it, when I place another negative on this one, it will become a positive. When I place a negative on the Y, it will switch to a negative four. This is what I will type in as my answer. On your homework, for some reason, it won't allow you to plot it on your graph. If you were to plot it on your graph, it would be right here. That would be where your new point is. But you will just type it in. Ninety degrees counterclockwise. When I look for my counterclockwise section on my green note card, 90 degrees, that means I'm going to have x, y goes to negative y, comma, x. Where is my point at for d? Negative 2, 0. Good. Does anybody want to tell me what our new point will be at? Let's check. Because x and y are flipped, I'm just going to flip it first. Then which one do I change the sign on? The y. So I look at it. It's 
it would just switch the sign. But does the zero do anything when I put a negative on it? So zero, negative two. This is what I would enter on my homework as my point. What if it asks for 90 degrees clockwise? On our note cards we made a little note. This 90 degrees is counterclockwise. Do you remember which one I used for clockwise? Good job. So I'm going to write x comma y, and it goes to y comma negative x. I look for my original point, negative 3 up 2. I'm going to switch my numbers. And then which one sign do I change? The 3. The 3 will switch to positive. This is what I would type in for my answer if I were to graph it over 2, not 3. So you will not be required to graph on these ones. You will just be required to find the new point and write down the coordinate. Any questions? Turn the page. When we are trying to find the line of reflection, I'm going to make a note that there will be some like yesterday's. So on yesterday's assignment, if you need to, finding the line of reflection was this one. So if you want to refer back to it, you can. For these examples, when I'm looking for the line of reflection, I'm going to draw the line that's in the middle of the two images. For this one, my line would be right here. When I write the equation for it, you notice that it touches right here where y is positive 2. My equation would be y equals Two. That would be my line of reflection. For the question on the right, when I look at these two points, I draw a line down the middle. You'll notice that this is two away, two away. So my line I would draw would be right here in the center so that they're equal distance from the reflection line. Well, 
what would y equal in this case? Yeah, say it louder. Yeah. Now, because there was not an image, I'm going to add one. What if I had a square here and a square here? That would put my line of reflection down this line. Anybody think they know what that one would be? Aiden, do you think you know what that pink line would be? X. Oh, YX. Going through the X. Goes through the X line. What number does it go through on the X? X equals three. So when it hits the Y line, I say Y equals. When it hits the X line, I say X equals. And it's just the number that it touches. Any questions on line of reflection? The last section on your assignment will ask you to rotate the entire image. You do have to graph it. It is not asking for coordinates on this one. For the first one, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. That means I take my x, y, and I'm going to change it. 90 degrees would be y, negative x, clockwise. Double check. Uh, that means I have to take all four points and adjust them 90 degrees. I'm going to start with R is at negative 1, 0. S is at negative 1, up 1. T is at positive 3 up 4, and U is at positive 3 up 1. If you want to label them, so you know that you got them all, you can. The new points, I would flip and change the sign on the X, so flip. Change the sign. Flip. Change the sign on the right. Flip. Change the sign on the right from a positive to a negative. Flip. Change the sign on the right one. I click on these points on my graph. Zero positive 1, 1, positive 1, 4, negative 3, and 1, negative 3. So it took our image and it rotated it 90 degrees clockwise. Rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. That means I'm going to change my point to a negative y comma x. My points, I only have three on this one. T 
is at negative 5 up 1. V is at, why did I put negative 5? I'm sorry. Positive 5 up 1. Positive 3 up 2. Positive 4 up 4. These are my originals. When I adjust, I'm going to flip sides and change the sign on the left one. So this one changes from a positive to a negative. Flip the numbers, change the sign on the left. Flip the numbers, change the sign on the left. Negative one up five. Negative two up three. Negative four up four. So my image went from here over to this one. Let's skip. We've already done. Are you okay if we skip the 180? We've done 180. Let me just skip it. We're just going to do 270 and then we will be done with 270 clockwise. When I check my note card, what does XY change to for 270 clockwise? Negative y comma that means it'll end up in this quadrant. So it would go 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and then 270 to fit in this box. My points, I'm gonna start with W. Negative two, zero. T is at negative four up one. U is at negative four up four. V is at negative three up four. I switch my X and Y. And I change the left number sign. Flip my numbers, switch the sign on the left. Switch my numbers, flip the sign on the left. Switch my numbers, flip the line, the sign on the left. Zero, negative two. Negative one down four. Negative four down four. Negative four down three. So we rotated our image. It went all the way around, but you can look at it as 90 degrees counterclockwise.